Hello teachers, it's Lewis Matheson here and I'm just going to make a video for you about uh, maybe making videos and also how you can help with online learning. Now you might have seen at the start of the video it said teaching physics online. This is a new project I'm doing at the moment. It's funded by the Ogden Trust um, but it's going to take several years and what I'll be doing is in addition to the GCSE and A-level physics videos I'm going to be making videos aimed at teachers. Now I have some experience with this, doing this uh, through um, the Institute of Physics where I work as a school-based physics coach but over time there will be resources for teachers to help you deliver the course um, obviously aimed at a different level to what I've done which is for the students so far. Exciting things to come in the next few years. Uh, but this video is really about what happens if your school shuts and you have to teach online and I suspect it's going to be quite chaotic initially. If you're a student watching this, if you're a teacher in another country then please put your comments below about what you're actually doing at the moment. Now, I, I guess I'm in a position where I don't have to be teaching online classes to certain groups and make sure that everybody actually does the work I set. And I think this is going to be a massive challenge. Um, I've seen there's people using things like Google, Google Classroom. I've seen that a lot of people are talking about Zoom, which uh, sounds a really, really popular choice. But there are some issues with using this. First of all, I've never used them, so I don't know actually how to set those up. But there are some other videos around that help you with that. Um, but I think it's going to be really difficult for lots of students because, to be fair, some kids are going to really benefit from this because they'll just be sat at home, there won't be any medical issues in their family. And if you've probably finished the course for Year 11 or maybe you've finished the teaching for Year 13, some of these students who are motivated, they're hardworking, they're going to sit at home and they're going to do past papers. And actually, even if the exams were to be delayed till later in the summer, that would give them an even bigger advantage because they would just, you know, be in such a good position uh, to kind of know the course, have had lots of time to revise. However, lots of students won't be in that position. And I'm talking about the students who maybe aren't motivated, uh, students who don't have access to the right equipment at home, and, you know, all sorts of issues with them perhaps getting ill as well. Um, one issue that I'm kind of quite aware of is that lots of people at home don't have full internet access, they don't have access to a laptop and they don't have access to a printer. So if you can try and make sure that the work you do is appropriate for them, that's going to be really useful. So if you're giving them lots of worksheets that you're sending back to do, just be aware that lots of people can't print them off and actually fill them in. Personally, I don't have a printer at home because I used to print all my stuff at school and now I do it at work in my office. So I don't have a printer at home for my own, for my own kids uh, if they're set work in that way. At the best, they can probably use their phone, they can look at it on the screen and maybe just write their answers on some scrap paper. The other thing I suppose is that uh, some people don't have internet or they don't have much data and actually they might not have enough devices. If a house has one laptop and the parents are off work and they're working on that laptop at home, that very well means that probably the students that you've got will only be able to access your lessons through their mobile phone and how can you kind of deal with that appropriately. Um, there's also, I suppose, an issue that um, some kids just won't do it. They will use this as an excuse not to do the work. We've all got students like that. They're very hard to motivate in lessons unless you're actually uh, very clearly making sure they're doing the work. Once they go home, are they going to spend the whole day on the PlayStation or are they actually going to be doing the work that you're setting? And, you know, how do you enforce that? Some ideas you might think about uh, perhaps could include... Um, you know, worst case of it, you know, you might just take some textbooks to these students. For me, when I was a deputy head of house, I'd get in my car, I'd drive around to the student's house and actually see why they weren't attending school, because sometimes it was very hard to get through on the phone to some of the kind of more at-risk children. Now, these are uncertain times, and it's really depending on your personal situation and what you're happy doing. Um, I know when I taught um, at a state school, we didn't have enough textbooks to give everybody a textbook to take home. We had boxes of maybe 16 textbooks for a class of 34 people. But it might be that you know who the pupil premium students are, your school might know who, who are the ones that are more at risk, and maybe you just get in your car with a box of textbooks and you drive around to the house and actually physically give those students some revision guides, some textbooks, and at some point the school's going to have to bear the cost of that. Who knows, it's really uncertain times. Probably that's what I would be doing if I was still a full-time teacher and I had the opportunity to do that. Anyway, um, let's imagine that you do want to do some online lessons. Uh, there's two options really. One of them is live streaming and you can do that through things like Zoom and you can potentially do it through YouTube but there's some issues there. The other one is having some pre-recorded videos that you make that you can give to your students. Now before you do this, just be aware that making videos is difficult 
well, it's not that difficult. It's actually, um, it's really enjoyable. It's, it's brilliant actually just having that creativity to do it, but it's very time consuming and it takes a lot of time initially to get confident um, about the technical side of things and also sometimes presenting to camera because suddenly you realize what your voice sounds like and what you look like and all your mannerisms. And it's really hard to get over that. Um, but basically that's you, that's what you sound like, that's what you look like, uh, get over it, everybody else knows that. Um, ways you can overcome this include if you have videos where you maybe just show your hands so you don't have to show your face, or maybe you're just uh, narrating over the top of a, a PowerPoint that you've already got. Now, YouTube is brilliant for the reason that kids watch YouTube often more than normal TV. Uh, they can all access it, or most of them can access it uh, through apps on their phone. And there's a way that you can use YouTube because it's completely free, but that's a nice way of storing the videos that you might make. So, at the very kind of simplest, what you could do is, if you're a science teacher, you'll probably have one of these that you can just take away from school and use it uh, during the duration. Um, I've just got my phone, in a retort stand over a piece of A3 paper. Worst comes to the worst, just take a stack of A3 paper from the kind of printer pile. Uh, if you've got some pens, that's brilliant, and you can take that home and then you know you can be set up at home. And what you can then do is, after you've kind of got the setup right, you can just press record on your phone, really good quality, you can then actually write what you need to, you can talk over the top of it, and you can then maybe set some work. Now this doesn't have to be for an hour, it could just be a three minute video, where you're able to address your students. It's so much more effective than just uh, writing stuff. Um, and actually they'll respect you because you've put that bit of time into it. I appreciate though there are some issues. Currently I'm filming this and my daughter's outside the office because um, it's a Saturday, I'm looking after her today, but I know when the school's shut, I'll have my kids around and I, I need to think about what I can actually do um, that's kind of fits in with my own family life as well. And at some point you've got to realize that you can only do so much. So you can make videos like this. Students really appreciate it. If you make your own YouTube channel, and there's loads of videos on YouTube about how to do that, it's completely free. You can put your video up there and then you can have an unlisted link, which means members of the general public won't see it. And I think, you know, compared to 10 years ago when I started teaching, most schools now have show my homework or they've got some way of sharing um, uh, actual, you know, work with their students um, online somehow. And you can just put that link in. The students might see a video that might only be two or three minutes long, but it maybe says what's gonna happen uh, in that lesson or the work that you might want them to be doing. And I think that's a really good way of at least setting work. Um, so that's one option. Um, obviously you can use things like camcorders, you can edit videos, but to be honest, nobody's expecting perfection. And I think most of your students would just appreciate the fact that you are doing work for them at the moment. So yeah, YouTube, uh, if you make it unlisted, only your students can see it and you can just send them the links to what they need to see. Um, just bearing in mind, of course, that you can't tell in that way who's actually done the work and who hasn't. The other thing is that um, maybe just see what's out on YouTube at the moment. Again, YouTube is all free and somebody might have done the work that you're trying to do. Why reinvent the wheel? If somebody's already made a video about uh, speed and distance and time, then why do you need to film that basic video again? And actually, to be fair, you know, kind of plugging what I'm doing, I've made over a thousand videos for physics. I've made lots of free ones for Isaac Physics for GCSE. That it, and they're all free to view on the Isaac Physics website. You'll see on YouTube, I've got about 650 videos or something like that, and they're all completely free to view. And also I've got my websites where I say about 60% of the website is free to view. I do charge for some of it um, because this is my job and I need to uh, afford to pay for the rent and the fact I need to pay for my mortgage because I'm not a full-time teacher. If there are issues in terms of um, students individually who can't maybe afford access to all the stuff that I've done or your school can't afford it, I'm sure that at times like this there must be some emergency funding because I've tried to keep the cost low and you know in the times like these, um, the fact that there won't be any printing costs at school because nobody will be there, I'm sure that um, from a school budget they can afford um, to kind of spend a small amount of money for the resources that they need for their students. Who knows? And uh, if you've got issues, if you've got questions about what I've done, um, you can always email me. I've got my email address at the bottom of both of my websites. You can contact me directly and I'm the one who reads it and answers it. Um, but again, have a look at the stuff I've already done and that might save you some time. So you can actually just point the kids to some videos that you know have been done by a teacher and therefore hopefully you can trust the material and maybe that will take a lot of um, your planning time out of it. So. Uh, what am I saying? Um, hopefully this won't be needed. Uh, on the other hand, you might find that you've got a real passion for making videos. Um, the worst comes to the worst though, is that um, you can just use your smartphone 
Um, you can film something in advance and that means you can have a couple of goes at it so you're, and that means you know that you're happy with what you put out there. Um, just using like a retort stand or something you've made at home to hold your phone, some A3 paper and a pen. I would imagine that you can just host this on YouTube, uh, send that link to your students, unless of course you want to go down the whole kind of online classroom with Zoom or something like that. As ever, uh, please uh, let me know your comments beneath this video. And if you are currently in a position where schools are shut and you're actually finding things that really help, you know, please put some comments beneath this video so that other people can kind of share good practice. So until the next video, um, hopefully uh, something there that can reassure you. But um, yeah, there we go. Uh, crazy times. If you're a teacher, you can always follow me at Lego Physics Guy on Twitter. Uh, and also you can subscribe on YouTube to stay updated with all my latest stuff. So until uh, next time, uh, thank you very much. Hello. This is my daughter I was saying about. Um, they can't really get in. <laughs> they can't get in, but um, yeah, I've just been making a video. You've been outside on your roller skates? Yeah. And that was okay, wasn't it? But yeah, I don't think we could do this for hours and hours every day, could we? So, uh, I can. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Um, yeah, teaching with ch children around is not very easy. <laughs>